Hey everybody, it's Whiskey coming at you with a Let's Play series that I'd like to get started on. This is Factorio, which if you've never played it is a really awesome and interesting game concept. Basically the game revolves around you getting trapped on an alien planet, your spaceship crashes and you're left with very minor resources and you have to successfully fend off aliens while simultaneously gathering resources to leave the planet. So that's what I'm doing. Um, this is a really good game. It, it, it hit Steam about, oh, I want to say it's probably been three weeks to a month ago. And uh, it's been a really, really interesting game concept. Unlike most sandbox games, it actually has a purpose. I, you know, I find some sandbox games or these resource collector games are really uh, really a bit of a pain to, to go through. But anyway, uh, so this this is iron ore and in order to really get started in this you need iron ore. And to fuel it, we're gonna go ahead and burn up ourselves some wood. Also gonna make myself some axes that'll help clear off some of these trees a little bit quicker. So anyway, the, the whole, like I said, the whole point of this game is to, to gather resources and to build the components to build a rocket to leave. And, or I guess maybe not to leave, but to get a communication satellite up to arrange for rescue. Well, the interesting part of this is you, there's two different modes that you can play. There's peaceful and then there's the standard mode, which is what this game is going to be. And it revolves around these aliens called biters. Well, that's just one type of alien. And the biters will actually go out of their way to attack you. And you'll notice in the lower right hand corner, I've got a pistol with 10 magazines of ammo right now. All right, that's enough of that for a little bit. Went ahead and collected my iron plates. So, like a lot of games like uh, like Minecraft with the crafting table, there's different things that you can make that will speed up various processes. And what this is, is this is a, a burner mining drill hooked up to a stone furnace. And if you put fuel in both of them, the mining drill will pick up iron ore and dump it if you have it set up right you see the arrow it's dumping it into the furnace and the furnace will turn that into steel then this red stuff is copper which is also important I need stone so I gotta go a ways this here is coal coal is really the primary fuel source although you can use trees. Coal is really where it's at. I am using a couple of mods in this. I the the default game is is perfectly playable as is, but there's a couple things that they don't change the gameplay to make it any easier per se. They just make it so that some of the more annoying aspects of the game are no longer in it. Like for instance, the default game you have to be within a certain distance of items to pick them up well when you have these massive factories because ultimately what ends up happening is, is there will be these massive factories the uh, things get too far away so like for instance in the default game you'd have to get very close and you can see it's telling me that it's out of out of fuel well with the long reach mod I can actually get that and reach it without having to get real close to it. So I'm going to set up just a real basic coal mining operation right here. You'll notice that I pointed them at each other. The whole premise behind that was to get them to feed each other and this means that they will continue to mine stuff until such time that they fill up and then they will stop automatically but they will fill each other and since these all require some amount of fuel in order to work 
the only way to um, the only way to keep them going is if they're feeding each other, which is fine. They, they don't once they fill up, they don't consume it, but it's a lot quicker to pick up coal when it's that way. <clears throat> Now I don't see any of the alien colonies nearby, which has me both nervous and not disappointed, truth be told. That might give me a little bit of extra breathing time before they really start attacking. Once you get above about 1% in the biter evolution, they, they kind of start attacking. And with, with not having one of their little colonies nearby, that'll be kind of nice. There is the ability to build um, military stuff, so you are able to build armor and you are able to build defensive turrets and research all the things necessary to have defensive turrets, but a lot of that stuff isn't, isn't something you start off with. And I'm just going to clear out some area here and... this coal issue a little bit. <clears throat> this is actually a really fun game. I really enjoyed the premise of it and I've not quite played through the whole thing in the aliens attack mode. I've, I've beaten it in peaceful mode and it took I want to say it was about 33 hours to complete just one. So this could be a very long let's play depending on what all I have to do. The crafting system in this game is pretty basic. Um, if you open up your inventory, you can see you've got four tabs. Each one of these has different options for what you can and can't build. Um, each one allows you to build different things. And they're pretty self-explanatory, really. I don't think there's any need to explain them. But once you have the resources, you can open it up and you can then modify things and and go from there. And ultimately the goal is, you know, you start off with with no next to no automation stuff. And so everything you do, you're basically building yourself. And you're doing yourself, especially when it comes to like science. The uh, the big one for for science is that uh, science automation becomes the way forward because you simply can't produce the science packs necessary to research things quick enough and that becomes a, a problem long term not what I am meant to do. <laughs> so like iron ore with copper, you can take your copper ore and smelt it and turn it into copper plates. Copper plates serve a very needed purpose in that like all other things, there is a need for it. Very descriptive, I know. Good job, Whiskey. You've, you've done a fantastic job of describing. Now, uh, copper, you know, copper, coal, iron, and stone are your, your basic resources that you start off with. Water, and I think we've got an oil spot. This is really actually a very barren location. There's not a whole lot of resources here. I mean, this looks like a lot, but it doesn't last that long. need to get some research stuff built so that I can uh, begin building defenses.
and upgrading from a pistol to a machine gun or submachine gun. That'd be handy right about now. Let's see what I can build. I can build one. All right. So everything in the, in this stage of the game is all powered by coal. And with coal power, you have to constantly be dumping resources into things or you need to automate everything to to put it in and you can do that later on with the conveyor belts and You can do that later on with conveyor belts and the... I can't even think right now. Conveyor belts and inserters. And what inserters are, they're like the, they're the arms that pick up stuff off the conveyor belt or whatever is in the square that they're pulling from. And it will turn that item and put it into whatever is behind it. In fact, as soon as I start doing power generation stuff, I will be able to demonstrate that quite handily actually mm -hmm. got five burner inserters I need 13 of them need more iron Alright, so what I'm doing here is I'm getting ready to start power production, and part of power production you need coal. At least initially you need coal, and you need water. So that's me placing a water pump. This is me placing an underground set of pipe. And then all of my burners. Now the burners, their whole purpose is to take water and heat it up to be used in the boilers, the steam boilers, to produce electricity. And you need electricity to run a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You need electricity to run basically everything. Okay. I need one section of regular pipe. And really all that that's there for is to give me some space between this so I can sneak things in there later. All right, and that's the start of our power generation. Now you can see it has available performance, but I don't have any uh, anything to, that needs powering yet. So we'll go ahead and place my 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 research um, <laughs> science. I can't remember what the lab. Okay, they call it a lab. Wow, I'm having some really awesome brain farts right now. So in order to power these things, what's going to need to happen is I'm going to need to collect enough resources to get me oh, electric mining drills. We need to do that. And the purpose of the electric mining drill is to... The electric mining drills all mine things faster than the, the burners do. So the burners still mine things reasonably quick, but it's not like it's... It's not fast enough to keep up with a belt. And with these, we want to spread everything out because we don't want everything all super tight up against 
every single one of those things. As soon as we start spreading things out a little bit, it becomes a little bit harder to, to manage as soon as the, the biters really start coming in, as soon as the aliens start attacking, but it's not like it's completely implausible to defend it. And they usually don't come in big waves to start off with. But I also don't want to... That's not going to provide nearly enough. But I also don't want to completely stack all of these rods up against each other because as soon as you start doing that, what ends up happening is you end up using a lot of resources, especially when one of those power poles will do both of these. And here's what I needed the burner inserters for. So the arrow is the direction that it's going to put whatever it is it picks up. The line is wherever it, what is what it's picking it up from. And eventually you'll start making all sorts of automated thing processes to do all of this. And I think what's going to happen is on the minimap here, I think I'm going to go down with all of my resources. So one of the, the big things with this is to map your resources out such that, oops, such that you can create bus systems. And the whole premise behind a bus is like the main bus for networking you put all of your resources into a, an area so you take all of your main lines all of your big throughput lines and then you run them all in one, through one part of the building and then branch off from there as you need it in doing that it just keeps things a little bit better organized is all you need a lot more iron than I'm currently getting Not enough ingredients. Well, that's not what I wanted to do. That needs to turn. Bloop. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to reach quite that far if if you didn't have the long reach mod. <laughs> Alright, so now we've got our first set of conveyor belts set up specifically to run coal to this. And this will be the first automated process that we have. I run some poles over there so that my miner has power. Alright, so he's going to start mining things. That means we can build more. And because he's mining that, we'll go ahead and take these guys and repurpose them for other things. <clears throat> now to make science packs, you see there's three of them listed here. There's actually one that's blue that's not up yet. We need an iron gear wheel and a copper plate. To make an iron gear wheel we need two iron plate. So we need a lot of iron plate and some copper. As soon as production on that starts rolling out, we'll be able to... There we go. We're going to go ahead and make 20 of those science packs.
Now with regards to this, 13 burners, boilers, and their inserters can support 10 of these generators, these steam engines. And once you've reached the end of that, you kind of have to start getting a little bit more creative. I am really nervous by the fact that we have not seen any biters yet. So the science packs, you want to put them in your lab, and your lab will start researching things then. And in this case, I've re started researching military first, and the reasons for that are, are quite simple. Basically, I don't want to be left without any form of defense when them biters are coming knocking. Because it's going to happen. It's a matter of when. Later in this game, there will be other resources that you can get, and they all come from oil. And you'll see over here there's a, a crude oil well, which, wow, that's actually a halfway decent yield. In this case, I kind of got shafted on my, my starting crude, but that's okay. You'll use that to make batteries, you'll use that to make petroleum. Petroleum can be used for all sorts of things. That ends up being really kind of the end game for this. Oh, I'm completely out of things to consume. Or out of coal. So we'll go steal some from power generation since power generation doesn't need it right now. I see a bad moon arising. All right, so now we got three electric drills drilling out all that they can. Drill baby drill from their little area of coal over there. And we've expanded and added our sixth boiler. And our research is almost done for military. One of the things I am going to do is I am going to bring the radar up. It's going to consume a lot of power, but it's going to give us a lot of warning on stuff. Okay, so we got the first thing researched. And I think from here I'm going to go to turrets. And you're probably wondering why so heavy onto the research into the military stuff. And that's because a good a good way to keep yourself from getting overrun early on is to go ahead and, and get all the research stuff done that way, or the military stuff. That way you can be prepared for when stuff goes completely sideways. So there's me building the submachine gun. It uses the same ammo as the pistol. It just shoots it a lot quicker. And truth be told, the pistol is kind of worthless at this point, but we'll keep it there just in case. I do need to research automation at some point in this, and automation will allow me to go ahead and start building the... go ahead and start building the factories that I can use then to start producing things. Okay, so we've got six of those. We need one, two, three, four. The rest can go into electric mining. You can see that the radar is actually revealing parts of the map, which is kind of handy. By the way, the performance, you can see that all I have are five items in total that are consuming electricity, and boy are they.
we'll go ahead and research Yeah, we'll go ahead and start researching that. And apparently I need some more resources. start looking into building some turrets. Now the interesting part about turrets is that they do need a, a decent amount of resources, but they also need some level of ammunition production, because they do consume ammo. You've got to be prepared for that. Especially since we're getting close in the evolution here. And right off the bat, it's going to be a, an effort in prioritizing stuff because I honestly don't know what's going to be the more important investment here. Probably our research lab would be my guess. It would also be beneficial for them to actually attack so I can tell where they're going to come from because sometimes they won't attack from the same area all the time. And eventually they'll actually start attacking you from all over the place. It's kind of gets a little hectic, almost like Planet P level. Put some ammo in that guy. That way, if they come from that way, we'll be prepared. Put some ammo in this guy. There we have it. very interesting that I haven't seen any of the biters quite yet. Usually we would be getting pretty close here. One of the other nice things is that when these get full they stop. They don't continue to consume electricity. They actually stop at that point. Let's take... Yeah, I think that's what we're going to end up having to do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my iron production. We're going to go ahead and get this started. Actually, we'll move him to the other side to help try and balance this out some. And I'm going to take this... go this way with it and we will start building automated furnace setup that way we don't have to have these burner drills consuming coal <clears throat> might help to put my science packs in the lab so I can actually be researching things. Mm. 
go ahead and take some electrical lines and get them a rolling as well. Doom, doom, doom. All right, we'll go ahead and get our automation done, get that researched. There's really no advantage to keeping your lines pretty aside from satisfying those of us with mild or sometimes severe cases of OCD. Got that up and going. We'll collect all of our stone and iron. You can see it's starting to fill up this belt. And the way this is actually going to work, I'll end up needing I'll end up needing to take a coal line up north. And as soon as I get a coal line up north, I can I can start running coal over to this as well, and we will be able to automate our iron plate production, and it won't take much then to expand the copper plate production as well. And copper plate, that production looks exactly the same as as the iron does. It's generally don't need as much of it in the game, but it's still one of the, the most common. Clear this out so I can actually see the the, the full copper field here. Later on in the game, we will get to trains, and I can explain one of the, the mods that I have. It's called the Factorio Automated Rail Layer, Farl. We load up a, a blueprint into it, and so long as the Farl has resources, it will automatically lay down the rail in the direction that we're going. But that's a ways off. We, we are uh, very much stuck in the relative stone age to the beginning of this. We are just getting electricity and automation. Which reminds me, I'm probably hurting for uh, science packs. What do you want to bet? Of course. It's because I keep forgetting to put them in there. Exactly 1.0 in the biter evolution. So I would suspect that any minute now we are going to see them little biters. Doom, doom, doom. We will want logistics here soon. Logistics is going to allow me to make belt splitters that will allow me to split off belt so that I can divert resources more appropriately. I 
think it also allows the underground belt, which also makes organization significantly easier. And I think that our stopping point for this video will be the completion of our iron production. Right, iron plate production. Alright, we will go ahead and get this Let's see if I got enough for one more. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. that will be a separate coal line specifically fe feeding our production of iron and coal and this belt will fill up and I will show you the blueprint for what we will do with the production line for it and this this blueprint is one that I saw another guy do on his the reason why I like it so much is because it's expandable and compact and those things become important later on when you are trying to defend everything looks like there's more stone up there You can see our coal is starting to pile up over here, so we better get my belt extended over. Okay. Get me a couple of stone furnaces. I've got my inserters. We need a lot more transport belt. And again, this is going to be to automate our production of steel or iron plate. And to do that, we need coal and we need ore. We also will need splitters, which I can't have quite yet. Because my research isn't done. for a minute. I think... Nope. Not correct. The reason why these are getting spread out the way they're getting spread out is because I need them to be. That way they are expandable in the future. Also going to need some long-handled inserters. There we go. armor crafting. 
So let's be honest, who doesn't like the idea of being able to craft armor? I'm like a level 99 uh, blacksmith. Alright, so this may look goofy, but the, re the reality is, is what this is going to allow us to do is there's three different types of smelting tools, for lack of a better phrase. We have the stone furnace, then we'll get a steel furnace, and then it will finally culminate in an electric furnace. And with the electric, for the, the difference there is uh, levels of efficiency. So currently, the stone furnaces aren't exactly the most efficient of the furnaces. And they, they produce things on a relatively slow basis is what I'm getting at. And as you upgrade them, you will be able then to expand to each furnace size, and the steel furnaces actually end up, or the, they're the same size as the stone furnaces, but the electric furnaces are bigger, which is why this configuration is used. Also, it puts the coal on the outside, and coal on an electric furnace is unimportant. So we'll go ahead and get our long-handled inserters. We need short-handled inserters. And power. And with these, You can see them start to go to work. That's what I'm looking for. And you can see how quickly they produce steel. And this will actually very quickly start to eat through resources. Which is good, that means we can expand. And expanding is good. Once again, still no biters. It makes me really nervous as to what's going on. accidentally choose peaceful mode or something crazy with my luck <laughs> The nice part about solar power in this, unlike real life, is that solar power is a relatively clean 
way to produce power. But again, it only produces it during the day, so that has its own side effects. And with that, it doesn't produce any any greenhouse gases, and that's really what drives these biters to evolve quicker. So this is the basic setup. And like I said before, what this will allow you to do is in the future it will allow you to expand this to the steel furnaces and then to the electric furnaces. And it will allow you to do that with minimal headache. Because we've started to actually produce steel the correct way, or sorry, not steel, iron the correct way, we will go ahead and cease this operation and it'll get moved down here to the copper. Lots of copper production. And you can see how this is already contributing to speeding things up a lot. Allows me to have a lot more of these going. look at the very top of the screen you can see the very first little biter colony up here all the way up there just barely popping up our production on. craft them quick enough, can I? Alright, get some power to these guys, and I think that we will call that we will call it the end of this this Let's Play episode. Oh, 
Well, I guess we got a couple more minutes. We don't need to quite end it quite yet. Besides, who's not having fun listening to me ramble on? Ramble on! Do 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 do. This blueprint here, or this this pattern, can be extended infinitely. Which it looks like that might actually not be a bad idea to go straight west with this. If we go straight west west with this, that'll give us plenty of room. I don't let's run down here a little bit and see just how far south our radar has scanned to see going south is practical. It doesn't look like it. So we'll go west with our bus. Hopefully we can find some more coal reserves. This isn't a whole lot of coal. we got plenty of power left, so we can always add more to the facilities here. Plus, at the rate that we're making steel now, it won't take much to uh, really take advantage of of our, our words, words whiskey. Use your words. We'll have plenty of power to take advantage of all of the resources that we do have access to right now without having to expand to build in another one of those trees or go to something crazy like photovoltaics. Dump that ore over there so they don't need it on my persons. Science are going. Extend this guy out, and then I think that yep, we will have hit our our mark. Doom, do, doom. do steel. That'll allow me some better tools. And we'll just keep extending this on over. Eventually you'll be able to get robots, and with the robots you'll be able to basically copy a blueprint and then it'll allow you to paste it too, basically, so long as the robots have the correct amount of uh, resources available to them. Kind of like with Farl, except... except that that was actually built into the game natively. That wasn't uh, an add-on. Although the blueprint manager, it was an add-on. That was an add-on that was very much so appreciated. So with this, we expanded it another 10, so that means we need another 10 long-handled inserters and 20 total shorthand or regular inserters. Inserters going.
Actually, I think I told you that math wrong. No, that's your, no I was right. You need totaled. 20 total long-handled inserters. Regular inserters. CD went off. All right. Gonna run and pick up all of the steel plate. So eventually what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up building a bunch of assemblies assembling machines and we're going to skip this whole process of me picking up stuff and then turning it into science. It will be a combination of the copper plates from over here and the steel. They'll all create their own little assembly. Ooh. Oh, I guess it's picking it up. Uh, it'll create its own little It'll create its own little assembly line, and, and what you'll be able to do is with those inserters, you'll be able to go ahead and automatically insert all of the science packs directly into the labs, as opposed to having to sit there and constantly put them in manually. But... I think we will go ahead and call it there in this next episode that we will go ahead and we will expand our little operation here, our smelting operation to include our copper and we will go ahead and push this guy out. Eventually what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add walls to everything and wall in our primary components that are really important because the turrets themselves will not be able to keep up on their own. And to, in order to do that effectively, we will need to go ahead and get a stone to cement. And I forget what that all entails, so we'll go ahead and look at the recipe. Stone brick. Stone brick is going to be a combination of stone and coal fired. So, with that in mind, we will go ahead and research bullet damage one. We will get that started. We're going to go ahead and end there. And in the next episode, like I said, we will expand our copper. We will probably start our stone brick and start walling this place in. Maybe in the next episode the biters will actually come and, and make a, a presence and a name for themselves. It's kind of hard to explain it without uh, actually showing them. And we've got all these lovely defenses up here just waiting for them to come. Oh, you can see up here there's a that's actually a very big base. So I have a feeling that's where all these guys are going to come from so we will need to start our wall up in the top portion and we will wall off a large section of this so that we can work relatively undisturbed and we will go from there this is whiskey thanks for watching